Aloha, what's up everyone, and welcome to another episode of Omens. I'm Jay Dreamers. Good to see everybody today. I already got everything pulled up for us. I'm going to have uh, some interesting things to share with you today. Yeah, but first, I think I'd like to share some viewer submissions. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull this screen up. And we'll do some viewer submissions to kick things off. Feels like we haven't done this for a minute, huh? Let's go ahead and get these screens pulled up here. Let's see. Not sure. There we go. Boom. All right. All right, cool. All right, so, hey, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Omens. Lots of crazy stuff's been happening in the world. And uh, I'm going to go over some of it with you. But first, let's check out some of these viewer submissions from my website, jdreamers.com. This first one... Uh, this first one comes out of, man, I did not write the person's name for some reason on accident. So, uh, this is, <laughs> I'm super sorry. Normally I write the person's name down, um, but this is like on one side, there was a, there was a sun, it looked like a sunrise. And then on the other side of the road, it looked like another sunrise, which was pretty crazy. But, uh, she was filming in the car and it looked like it was like sunrise on one side and sunrise on the other side too so that was pretty crazy and trippy uh this next one Anne marie out of missouri uh she sent these pictures these are not hers but these are from greenland and these this is something that i'm going to talk about here in just a bit these weird spirals and strange lights that have been seen in the skies uh, probably for the past five to ten years, they've really kicked off, and you know, at first they were just anomalous and strange, but now people are starting to see these all over the place, especially with those spirals and stuff that people are seeing. Um, oftentimes, up towards the north, up to up towards like the North Pole and stuff. Uh, here's another one that she sent out my way. You can see like the auroras and stuff. Anne Marie, hey, what's up? Welcome, Anne Marie. Good to see you. Um, also thank you, I want to say thank you to everybody that was, uh, I did a, a members only yesterday and sort of vented and got out some of my emotions and stuff. So, you know, it was, went through a rough patch, but I just wanted to say thank you. I appreciate everybody that was there for me. Uh, we'll come back to those spirals, these spirals right here. I'm going to talk more about those in depth here in just a bit, just a minute. This one was sent to me by Jaded Empath in Mississippi. I thought this was a really cool picture. It's um, it's the statue of Jesus, and it looks like he's holding up the moon. And it took this guy three years to finally get this shot right. But the reason it's an omen to me is because uh, the statue of Jesus, for me, represents the blue beam that shoots up out of Mount Maru. And it goes up and it splits out at the top as it gets close to the, the top of the firmament or the apex of the firmament up there, which I believe is the actual physical real moon. So I thought that was a cool picture. This one was sent in by Cat out of uh, Florida here in the United States. Look at this moon, how bright this is getting. And a lot of people are starting to see way more of these halos around the sun and the moon lately. Um, but one of the omens is that the moon will get brighter. As you can see, it looks almost like a sun. Hey, Boudica, thank you. I really appreciate it, everybody. Uh, let me just double check the chat, make sure everybody's... Hey, what's up? Mic check? Oh, snap. The mic's not sounding good? Okay. Ah, I got double mics on. That's why. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, that should be fixed up. All right, cool. So the, the audio should be good now. Maybe, hopefully not even too loud. I'll turn it down just a bit here. All right, cool. So the audio should be better now, I hope. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, I know I've, I've been gone for a minute, just uh, handling some court stuff and my personal life. So, yeah, hopefully the audio is a little bit better. All right, cool. Everybody's saying it sounds good? All right, it sounds better at least. Hopefully it sounds tolerable. All right, uh, let's get back to these viewer submissions. So, the moon is is 
According to biblical prophecy, at the very least, it's supposed to get brighter and brighter and brighter, seven times brighter, as we roll up into the quote-unquote end times. And this is what I'm seeing. Me personally, I go out every night, I take a look at the skies, the stars, I examine the heavens, um, especially the moon and other anomalies that are up there lately. But um, the moon is smaller to me than it used to be. Than I remember when I was a kid. Every single night that I... I mean, you know, there's exceptions. And it depends on the atmospheric conditions and stuff. But it seems to me that the moon is getting smaller. It just looks a little bit smaller lately. And it's also brighter, right? Which makes sense because it's a light up there in the sky. The one that, that we call the moon. And whenever it gets smaller like that, it's becoming more focused. And because it's becoming more focused, it gets brighter, right? And academics actually concurs. They, they back that up and they say uh, the moon is getting further and further away from, you know, the planet or whatnot. Uh, this next one is from Mario. Mario Cuidad de Mexico. Mario Cuidad de Mexico. Thank you so much, Mario. Um, his brother, he says that his brother took this video of this um what appears to be a rocket launch i'm going to go into more detail about these because these are more of a common occurrence and the general answer for this on the news whenever the news reports these types of things is that uh oh it's just another spacex rocket launch pretty typical just another spacex rocket launch you know they're going into orbit they're launching things up there into orbit so in a minute what i'm going to do is i'm going to share with you rocket launches the way i remember them when i was growing up in the 80s and 90s right um how rocket launches actually look versus that okay that is weird and strange. And this isn't even one of the strangest looking ones. I, there's other ones I'll show you where there's little flippies spinning out of control and spirals and all kinds of weird stuff that's happening. There's ones that blow out little smoke rings and stuff like that. Really strange rocket launches and, and things of that nature. Uh, this one was taken from Mexico. Many more people are seeing these. They almost look like man-made comets, doesn't it? I feel like it looks like a man-made comet up there in the sky. Let's fast forward it just a bit just to see what else we got. It looks like it goes in and out of focus for just a second there. But yes, thank you so much Mario for sharing that one with us. Now let's get to some of the headlines. And uh, I'll go ahead and switch over. Boom. And then... Let's see, we'll go over to, boom, there we go. All right, cool. Now let's go over to these headlines and check some of this stuff out that's happening in the world right now. So we're gonna start off with these Tesla bots. This is very interesting. This one's called Optimus. And um, this kind of blows my mind that this is just, I mean, it's, it, they just say that it's technology and it's just oh it's it's the future of technology and it's advancing and stuff look what it can do it can walk like an old man and it can cook breakfast these things can cook and stuff too they can do all kinds of interesting things but if you think about ai and how basically it has almost completely and it's about to replace actual human artists and and other things too um like I talk about all the time, there's always a good side and then there's a bad side. They always show you the possible benefits and how it's good and stuff. And I agree that, you know, it, these things can be used for to benefit us. However, this robot right here um, could like lift up a car. <laughs> like these things are incredibly strong. And, um, Definitely could be dangerous, you know, if something bad happened. This is right out of sci-fi. This is from like the uh, iRobot movies and Isaac Asimov books and stuff like that, which are prophetic in nature. It's, it's inevitable that these types of things will go bad, that there will be instances of robot murders and robot, you know, police forces. And, and they're already working on that kind of stuff, too, where they have robot police and robot dogs and robot drones and all this stuff. 
And there is no uprising from humans at the moment. Everyone's just really lackadaisical and we're just accepting of everything that, that's coming out these days. Um, and that's, that's more of our conditioning, humanity's conditioning. We've just been conditioned to just accept everything and just take whatever's handed our way. So we're going to have to accept the consequences whenever this thing, you know, its eyes turn red and it goes on a murderous rampage or whatnot because that's inevitable. Right now, it's showing you the beginnings. This is stage one. This is when everyone's in the honeymoon phase and they're like, oh, wow, look at that. It's a robot, like a real actual robot. But when they're in your house and they glitch out and or they're hacked into or they're controlled by something else or they become sentient and decide to do what they like to do, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? So yeah, these are some of the new Tesla robots, and there's other kinds, there's other versions of them too. Next up, we've got the Devil Comet. This is uh, very interesting. This thing's been really pushed in the news a lot lately. I mean, there's been many comets. We didn't have this many comets, um, uh, comets whenever I was growing up. A comet was like a amazing once-in-a-lifetime thing that you would see. I can't believe there's a train going past right now. <laughs> I live right next to train tracks, but a train just went by before I started this video. Anyways, um, so the Devil Comet. Now check this out. This one right here says, don't miss your chance to see the cryovolcanic Devil Comet. You see that? Cryovolcanic means ice volcano. So what they say is that this is a flying volcano made of ice in space. And this is the official explanation. Now, so now our children are going to be taught this and are being taught this, and it will be commonplace and accepted with along with all the other weird stuff like space weather and atmospheric rivers and um, polar vortices and all this all this strange vocabulary that's sort of just emerged in the in the past few years stuff that never really used to exist they're coming up with new names and description descriptions for things what this really is what every single comet is except for one there's there is one great and grand comet um which is completely different than every other comet that has ever existed but all of these other comets these regular ones these are called comatic aberrations and they're an optical phenomenon. Tiffany, hey, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, so this is called a chromatic aberration. Basically, what this is, is, is something, it's a point of focus that's out of focus. So it's like a star that's out of focus, basically. You could look at it like that, right? Um, but what they want us to believe is that this is a flying volcano of ice in space. That it's a flying volcano. I mean, it's hard for me to even wrap my mind around what modern academics teaches now about the concept of space and stuff. Let's move on to this next one. Uh, this one says, oh, this is really cool. I stayed, I stayed up all night and I will stay up all night tonight watching the rest of this. Many people have recommended this movie for me for Truth in Movies. It's actually a series, uh, but it, it, it's like a movie. Uh, this says, new Netflix series with wild concept is so good, people are watching it all in one day. And what this is, is a, uh, a series that is called Three Body Problem. Right there behind me, Three Body Problem. And this is amazingly good. I really like it. So thank you all so much for recommending this to me. I will be breaking this down. I've already started taking a lot of screenshots. I'm going to have more actual clips from the movie and stuff to share with people because there's a lot of stuff in here that I, I, I need to actually play it a bit to show you what's happening, you know. Um, for example, one, one, I'm going to, and I even break down all the symbolism and stuff too. Um, but one of the things that happens is that all of the stars in the sky, the world across, turn off. And then they turn back on and they just flash and blink. It's a very interesting show. So keep an eye out for that. I will be uh, breaking that down fairly soon. And it will be extensive. 
I'm going I'm I'm already very detailed into this and I'm breaking down every aspect of it. It's inc incredibly deep and it touches base on all of the ancient oblivion and plasma apocalypse uh, things that we talk about here on my channel often. Now, back to what's happening this year with like the solar eclipse and all this stuff. There's a lot of things that are adding up. There's a lot of coincidences, we'll, we'll call them, right? I don't believe in coincidence, but there's a lot of things that are coming together that are all omens in nature. And when you have one omen, that's interesting. When you have two omens, that's definitely of note. When you have three and four and five all around the exact same time of year, all coming together and happening around the same time, that should raise some eyebrows. At least it does mine. And this says solar eclipse warnings. I mean, have you ever heard of a solar eclipse warning in your life? I have not. I've never heard of a solar eclipse warning. Like they were, you know, I've seen, I've seen solar eclipses have come and gone many times. But none like this one that's on the way has been promoted and there's been so much propaganda and and fear being put out there like basically people are being told to be afraid and to to be scared of an eclipse for some reason which is also very interesting because we're, we're going to talk about that when we break down a uh, three body problem this guy says i'm scared as hell and a lot of times they actually take these quotes out of context and stuff but what they're trying to do is they're trying to get people to be afraid charlie hey that was super kind good to see you charlie so um the reason for this i believe is not because they whoever they are um are trying to um uh, one of the what's that new trendy word that people are using um predictive programming right i don't even know what that is <laughs> like i i hear everyone saying that and i don't i'm not sure they know what that is it's predictive programming <laughs> like okay um what like why what is what's the, what's the purpose of it of predictive programming you know what i mean like i get it you know like they want everyone to be more accepting of something when it actually happens but i mean they're telling you in advance you know it's not really i don't know if it's programming or it's, it's like prophecy or something um but yeah this the solar eclipse they're they're okay so let me tell you what my opinion on, and i'm sorry i'm kind of stuttering today but i've been off lately um my opinion on this and and the solar eclipse and and why is it that there's a lot of fear that's that's surrounding it is i don't tend to blame humanity i i i've stopped doing this for the past couple of years is to blame them okay whoever they are uh there is no them to me that's that's vague that's very vague and it's generalized and it's an easy out you know to just blame some mysterious group that must exist or whatnot um instead of looking to ourselves and including ourselves in the whole them you know what i mean we are in this together and we resonate with one another and um what we feel and think and remember consciously and subconsciously collectively manifests so we manifest these things we manifest this stuff you know this is an omen being scared of an eclipse why because there is a great and grand eclipse a conjunction that happens up in the sky um with three different bodies which we'll talk about when we break down the movie um that leads to the apocalypse and that is this quintessential root memory that we all share and know and we we correlate eclipses with terrible you know earth shattering earth changing events and stuff like that um I'm going to talk some more about the eclipse here in just a second let's get back over to this this weird video here's another angle from that same video that was sent in uh, the Mexico video that I shared with you earlier. See how it shoots out that little smoke ring and stuff like that? This is supposed to be a rocket launch. And they're like, here it is. It's, you know, it's it's just Elon just, just shooting a rocket. Rockets are not supposed to do that. This says, what the heck was seen streaking across the Houston area skyline Monday night? So people will look this up. 
Was it a falling star? A comet? A satellite? Or aliens? Let's see what these guys say. Hold on. And we were sitting there with like a magnifying glass, like, what is that? What can, can we see? <laughs> no little is. green men, right? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> not, not this at all. time around. Okay, hold on. Let me play that again. Time to check this out. Lots of you have been asking us about this bright light in the sky tonight. It appeared to be streaking across the sky, creating smoke rings. Hunter Williams, the chief meteorologist from our sister station, KVU, even saw it from Austin tonight. Well, it turns out it was the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket that launched from Florida tonight. It turns out. Okay. Like, these are the things they say. They, they've been told this. They don't know that. They're just newscasters in a studio somewhere. So they're told to tell us that this is what we need to believe. Right? Um, and then let me show you one more, a little bit more. Online this evening as they sent a series of Starlink satellites into orbit, according to the trajectory. Yeah, time out. So who said they could do that? You know what I mean? Did any of you vote on that? Did any of you say, yeah, I, 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 I support that. I think that's a good idea. Go ahead and shoot a bunch of crap up into the sky and leave it up there for whatever reasons you'd like to. They don't get anyone's permission. They just have money and power so they do whatever they want to and that that's always bothered me a bunch right it, it just i mean it just bothers me i mean just planes just airplanes have always bothered me like the people just see an airplane and they just assume that it's some safe craft you know because their country they you know looks out for them and uh there, there's no way that their country you know would allow foreign airplanes or people to bomb them or whatever. Um, same thing with all this crap that they send up into quote unquote space. Was this a spatula? That's weird. Trajectory on their live feed. They flew right over Texas during their trip. And yeah, they flew right over Texas and they're just they're These rockets sh sh allegedly they shoot out all these chemicals and crap and they spray crap into the air and they just, they detach all kinds of debris and stuff falls back down and stuff. Nice tonight, by the way, making this type of thing even more visible, Pat. Yeah, thank gosh those clouds got out of the way, but our news thank was gosh. with these photos. That's funny. I wonder if he's Jewish and that's why he says gosh. Thank gosh, like dear gosh. I wonder if when he prays, he says like, dear gosh. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so that's really interesting. So that's that's what it looks like. Let me show you one more time here. Streaking across the so you see that how it shoots rain. out stuff. A lot of them are starting to do this. So let's take a look, shall we? Let's let's stroll down memory lane for a quick second. And I watched this entire video. This is a compilation of rocket launches over time starting in the 80s i'm gonna skip through some of these okay you tell me if you see now this is what a rocket launch really looks like okay let me let me just skip it a bit here see that how there's a plume of a, like a cloud of smoke that comes out of the rocket and leaves like a, a trail and a line that goes straight up into the sky this is this is how rocket launches always were this is how they always have been um the rocket, they'll, they'll do their countdown. The rocket will go straight up. It'll, you know, go slow at first or whatever. It has this huge cloud of smoke that, that draws a line up in the sky. And then inevitably, oh, I want to talk about those, those parts coming off too. But inevitably, you'll see it start coming back down, basically. Right? They, they don't tell you it comes back down, but it's obvious when you watch it that it's coming back down, right? And, and you know it's coming back down. See, do you notice how whenever it starts to come back down? Hold on, play that again. When it starts to come, first of all, it will always go upside down on the side where it's heavy, which is where this space shuttle thing is, right? Which makes sense. So when it blasts off, it will always start curving towards that space shuttle side because it's heavy on that side, right? So check this out. It will blast off, and then it'll start to curve because it's going to come back down. But then they cut to another scene. They always they always do that. This is how all of them used to go, okay? But none of them used to have spirals and little flippy whippy doos and I don't know. I'm just making up words, but you know, strange smoke rings and stuff like that. You see, this is what they would do. They would show you it going up into the air. And then becoming upside down, which they don't tell you, oh, it's now upside down. No, they, they, they 
force a perspective on you so that you believe that you're not seeing it upside down that it's just like oh it's at a strange angle now did you see that when when these rocket booster deals come off they're designed to turn off they're designed to stop shooting out all their rocket crap right and and you see this on every single one of them that they turn off as they fly away on the spacex ones they try to say like oh well the reason you see all this crazy you know tails and and spirals and spinny things and stuff those are the, just the rockets when they when they detach them and they just keep on spinning out of control and stuff but on all of these other rocket launches they don't do that. Check this out. This dude's going to just, it's going to flip over and it's going to start coming. It's It goes in a big arch and it will, it's at an angle. You see that? Okay. This is not shooting straight up into space because they don't go past the dome. Okay. They don't go past the firmament. This bad boy is going to come upside down and then it's going to go down into the ocean and crash or splash down or whatever they call it. Okay. But anyways, this is what ro real rocket launches looked like my entire life growing up they didn't have weird smoke rings that they you know blew out of them or strange you know strange weird looking clouds that look like they just splashed into an ocean above our heads look that bad boy is upside down and they will always cut that once they get to that angle they show you this and they're like yeah it looks like it's going straight up into space and this is normally, that's what a rocket launch normally looks like, with a little plume of spo smoke right behind it. They don't get up into a certain area of the sky and there's an explosion of weird, you know, um, gases and smoke and whatever that is that, that, that like the SpaceX ones have, allegedly. Uh, it's really weird. But anyway, so check this out. All of them look like this. So I see how they get upside down. <laughs> They always do that and they, they try to make it seem like, you know, oh no, it's upside down because we're down here and now it's so high up. No, man, it's upside down because it's coming back down. All of these ones are. So you'll notice they're all pretty much the same. Uh, I do want to skip ahead, ahead to like one of these end ones. Oh, I saw a lot of night ones too. So with the SpaceX ones, they'll say, oh, well, it's, it's, a, it's a twilight effect and it's going up so high that the sunlight, you know, hits all that smoke and then that's why you can see it and that's why they change colors up there in the sky and they do this and that. You don't see that with these older ones. Did you see that? Okay, these older ones, they don't have any weird twilight effect, you know, explosive looking like they just hit an ocean in the sky above us. These are old school, old fashioned rocket launches. Now, let me see if I can find where they actually deploy those. Um, there we go. So they deploy those things, and then they just turn off. That one was kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can find another one. Where those little booster rockets, when they come, when they detach, they turn off. They don't keep on, you know, oh, well, they have to exhaust all of their reserves or whatever. No, like they, they have um, contingencies for that so that they turn off so that they don't crash back down to the ground and you know injure people and stuff like that all right so this should detach all right i think it detaches right there now watch they detach ah oh, i didn't really show it on that one but if you watch enough of these you'll see them that they detach and then they uh they turn off okay they don't just keep on flip around and stuff and make all these spirals and weird stuff like they blame on the SpaceX ones. And here's some more nighttime ones. This is what it looks like at nighttime. And you would see it. It looks like a little glowing ball with uh, smoke that just goes straight up behind it. And it's just a trail of smoke. That's your old fashioned regular rocket, rocket launch. Just a trail of smoke that goes up. There's no weird plume that, that gets bigger and wider and wider as it goes and looks like a fish in the sky and all this weird uh, weird stuff that Elon has, apparently. But yeah, these are your old-fashioned rocket launches. This You could tell it was a rocket launch. N back in the 80s and 90s, people didn't look up at a rocket launch and go, Oh my God, what is that? Is that an alien spacecraft? What is going on? We got to record this. You know, like, people, it was obvious what it was. It was a rocket launch, and people knew it when they saw it. At least, usually, people did. I did. I think this is the one I was looking for where it detaches up here. There's a really good one that shows it perfectly. Usually they cut away whenever these things detach. 
Is this it? Yeah, I think they're going to detach right here. There it is. Let's see if this is the one. Yeah. Yeah, you see it just turn off right there? Now watch. Just check it out. Way in the corner over there. They, they just turn off. You know what I mean? So anyways, these I just wanted to walk down memory lane. Just to remind everyone what they look like or what they used to look like. Old-fashioned rocket launches didn't have smoke rings. They didn't have strange, weird spirals that got bigger and bigger and bigger and took up a third of the freaking sky and stuff. It was just, it. you knew it was a rocket launch because it was like a one little trail of smoke that went right behind the stupid rocket. You know what I mean? Anyways, um, next up, we've got another omen that is coinciding with uh, the eclipse and all of that fun stuff that's happening which is the 17 year cicadas that are going to be hatching here pretty soon. They call it a double brood. Billions of cicadas, basically locusts, right? And this, in this particular one, they call this the cicada, cicada apocalypse. That also kind of bothers me that they're putting apocalypse on the end of everything. Shark apocalypse and um, bear apocalypse and what, like, apocalypse is not a word. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. It's, to me, that's just like our um, another omen for idiocracy and how like we have no check on our vocabulary as a society, as as humanity, as a collective. We have no check on our vocabulary. So people are spelling things however they want to. They're just they're they're mixing and matching words together. Um, they're adding you know double and triple suffixes and just creating words out of thin air that are accepted by everyone else because they don't know any better. So they just assume that that's a real word and pretty soon people forget the original word. So for example, comment, right? If you leave a comment, people say, hey, like, subscribe and leave a comment. If you do leave a comment, you're a commenter. You're a commenter. You're not a comment hater. You're not a comment hater or a comment hater or whatever. That's not a word at all. I mean, I mean it, it might be accepted as a word these days, today, but if you do an etymological study on that, that is a non-existent word that doesn't mean anything. It's gibberish. Billions of cicadas will pop out of the ground at the same yeah. time. Get used to that sound. The brood of cicadas <laughs> that emerges every 13 years and the brood that emerges every yeah. 17 are coming out Bugs. at the same time. <laughs> yep. This will be the first time this has happened since 1803 so this is the first time that this has happened since 1803 right there's basically they're predicting a plague a swarm um so that's pretty huge too next up we've got this article i also would you know speaking of stupidity and um idiocracy this also reminded me of the same type of thing right so this article is entitled hey ray which is this guy's name this weatherman or whatever he is right which is also weird that like you know the the eclipse is is in the weather so much you know what i mean i don't know it's kind of weird he says it's called hey ray what if it's cloudy during the total solar eclipse question mark what if for some reason that phrase, what if, has become an actual question in our modern world. That is not a question. This is laziness. Because there should be something between what and if. I know I know. some people are like, it's semantics. You know, now you're just nitpicking or whatever. But this is how we lose our identity. This is how we lose um, our intelligence. This is how... This is how we lose communication with one another. This is how languages split and split and split and split because they're, they become unchecked. What if this, has, this, this sentence should not have a question mark because this is not a question. Asking what if is not asking a damn thing. What it is, because it starts with the word what, people assume it's a question, but it's not. It's this, this right here is not a question what, whatsoever. It's ask, it is, it is a proposition is really what it is. It's a sly way of telling you to consider something instead of asking you to consider something. It's a sly way of phrasing something. And this is all spellcraft as well. It's a, sl it's a slick way of rephrasing a command which is putting a thought in somebody else's mind by, 
pretending that it's a question that they're genuinely asking, but they're not really genuinely asking a question. If they were, they would be asking you to consider. Like, for example, um, what would happen to you if it was cloudy during the solar eclipse or whatever, right? Um, what would it look like? What would the solar eclipse look like if? There's, there's all these words that should be right there, but they've just been taken out because people are too lazy to form a complete thought, basically. And I know many people do this, and I have done this myself, so I'm not picking on any individual, okay, or any groups of people or anything. I'm just saying, let's think a little bit, let's put a little bit more thought into our speech and our vocabulary and our vernacular and the way that we speak. I found that when I'm doing my research and I come across, you know, people that are also researchers and truth seekers and whatnot, sometimes they come across older books from like the 1800s or the early 1900s, whenever a vocabulary was something of esteem, you know, people were respected for being well-spoken, right? And, and it's, so I just, I, I enjoy reminding myself not to lose myself in laziness in, in my in my manner of speech, right? So I also am passing that on to all, all of you. All right, anyways. Oh, the other thing is this is retarded. This is dumb, okay? So I'm just going to say that. This question, if even if it was a question, hey, what if it's cloudy during the solar eclipse? Like... Then you won't see the freaking solar eclipse. Then, then it will be blocked. And and yet, they devote an entire article to answering this alleged question. What if it's cloudy during the eclipse, huh? What if that? What if then? Then you're not going to see it. <laughs> there's there's no article that should be written. There's no need for a video. Like there's this website should not even exist. It's just a testament to low IQ or the world across, at least here in the United States. I, I promise. Um, hello, Pittsburgh. This is, this is coming from you. <laughs> no offense to anyone in Pittsburgh, but I'm just saying, uh, Hey Ray, what if it's cloudy during the solar eclipse? What then? What about that? Huh? Like, no kidding. Yeah, I've I've seen many solar eclipses where it's been cloudy. Um, same thing as when the sun's out and it's cloudy. So I don't I don't know, man. Like, who are these people? Anyways, let's move on. Uh, let's see. We've got oh the the Nova, right? This is really interesting too. So these people are going to talk about this Nova. I want to talk about this. There's a Nova, which is when like a a, a star semi explodes. Which is impossible, okay, because stars are just points of focus. They're just light. Light doesn't just explode, okay? You get light from an explosion, but or you can, but light itself doesn't just explode, okay? I don't believe in stars exploding and stuff like that. Um, but it's talking about this nova. Check this out. They predict, according to their academic model, like stars are extremely far away, lud ludicrous distances away that I, I'm not compelled to even believe in those, those vast distances. Especially that the things I can see with my eyes that look like they're right there are that far away. But anyways, they're now predicting novas, which are like one step to a supernova. So check this out. This is it. <laughs> the realization. <laughs> this is your chance. Um, yeah, this is actually one. Hold on, let me rewind that. It's visible in the Milky Way between now and September. Very rare event and only happens every 80 years. Okay, so first of all, do you hear this lady stuttering while she's saying this? Because she has no idea what she's even talking about. She's just reading off of a teleprompter and she's trying really hard to sound convincing, right? Let me um, just listen one more time. Now in September, very rare event and only happens every 80 years. Wow, to better understand so this. we yeah. might not be here the next time. Oh, wow, yeah. So uh, yeah. Let, me, let me figure that out. <laughs> yeah. You see, when they don't know what they're talking about, they always start laughing like Muppets. Like, does anyone else get that, like, feeling, you know? Like, they, they just turn it into a big giggly bubble fest of, you know, 
elementary school, kindergarten classes. I don't know. They have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Okay. You cannot predict even in their model, a star exploding, which is what I'm going to call this. Okay. I'm just simplifying it, but check this out. I don't think that's that was a very work. sobering thought. Could you hear the wheels turning? Like this is it. Now she's saying this chick behind me, she's saying, Oh, it's a, it's a sobering thought that I will be dead the next time that this happens. Which is, I like that. I like that she's thinking about her very limited lifespan because people take that for granted, right? Like they're just, people are basically are raised and taught to just that they're going to be young forever or whatever. And I teach people, you're all children, right? We have a syndrome right now. Incomparable, thank you. Um, we have a syndrome. It's like Benjamin Button disease, kind of, right? I'm a, I'm a kid. See, I got a beard and all this stuff right here. This is this is wrong, okay? I mean, I I, I bask in you know the the stages of puberty that we have during this cycle and during this time and then during this age, um, but that's all about to change, okay? Whenever um, lifespans are extended and you know our conditions in this world promote cellular regeneration once more um there will be many well there'll be more cycles to puberty it won't just be one stage of puberty at like 13 or 12 or whatever it is uh, it would be many cycles and stages and you know people will have more stages where they they're they, they get more teeth which is probably where your whole wisdom tooth things comes from that's just a an echo from times long ago when you actually grew a third set of teeth um people will grow tails once more they'll grow horns and stuff like that um anyways What's my point? I forgot. Sorry. Um, let's see what they're saying about this Nova. To the realization. <laughs> this is your chance. Um, yeah, this is actually one of six of these recurring uh, uh, Nova situations in the... Nova situation. <laughs> it's a Nova situation. In our, well, at least that we know of in our galaxy. We know of. There we go. See? Now, when people who have no idea start talking and just talking in circles, they use the word we a lot right be careful and and i noticed in my personal life over the years that i was copying how other people spoke for the longest time and when i meant me when i meant i i would say you for some strange reason you know like people do this all of the time they'll they'll say um uh yeah, you know, whenever d during this time of year, you get really cold in the in you know if you go outside in the winter, like uh, you can get you can get you can get scared, you can this, you can that, and they keep saying you, but that's not true. They really mean me. They should be. I I realized I should be personalizing these things that I'm saying instead of projecting them, in instead of t telling other people this is your truth i should be sharing my own see so what we have here it's not one star it's actually two stars we have a red giant that's kind of in the last days of its life and it's expanding its atmosphere is growing and then we have a white dwarf which is actually in the outer edges of its atmosphere but the white dwarf even though it's small it still has a lot of gravity and what it does is it's stealing the matter from the sun most right okay so there's all kinds of things that i have problems with when it comes to this uh one this right here, this big red circle with like this plasma that's leaking out of it, this is a, this is an omen in and of itself. Because remember how I said there there is one real comet, one ultimate comet that's much different than all the other ones. That is the eye in the sky. That is the apex of the firmament, and one day people will see it, and it will look similar to this. It's called the doom shape. I mean, it'll actually have more rings in it. It'll have like more circles. It'll look like an eye. Um, but it leaks plasma, which is where you get the whole like, you know, when you see um, celebrity pictures of like people think that celebrities are all in the Illuminati. And so they stick out their tongue and it's like, you know, like Jim Carrey's all mocking tongue and all that stuff. The tongue and sticking out your tongue at somebody is very similar to like winking. You know what I mean? Um, it's a symbolic reference to this shape. It's a symbolic reference to an opening in the actual physical sky where plasma leaks in.
which is the plasma's red or pinkish color or magenta, you know, similar to a person's tongue. So this is hydrogen and as it starts to pull that in and around and by the way the the plasma that's wrapped around our world is also hydrogen on the white dwarf it creates what's called an accretion disk and once it gets enough matter it has it should not create a disk okay if this were true in their academic model this should create a sphere because it's gravity, allegedly, that's pulling in all directions from this thing. Is it? This gravity is all screwed up, man. I, I can't. The more I look into it, the more I can't stand it. Um, so, like it, it in this example, gravity may, pulls all of this plasma, and it, it it only pulls it to the sides and creates a disc. Like it should not do that. It should be pulling 360 all the way around in every single direction. That's actually a fusion. Should be wrapped that takes in plasma. Place. We see that in the form of a burst of light that happens, and so it takes again. The cycle is about 80 years, and then we see that burst of light. Another 80 years, and then we see another burst of light, and it lasts no. at least bright enough for our eyes to see for a couple of days. Time out. I'm I'm saying no to the 80 years. They 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 keep on hammering this whole 80 year garbage. In, and I'm going to show you how that's not true in just a second. So if you have binoculars, you can actually probably see it for about a week or so. But that's something that's going to be taking place between now and September is what the scientists... Listen, according to the academic model, if stars are millions and billions of miles away and whatnot, first and foremost, you would not be able to see any of that because that's way too freaking far away. So they have to make the stars ridiculously large. And they're like, oh no, it's because they're so gigantic. They keep on moving the goalposts and they keep on shifting their stories around and changing perspectives and stuff in order to make their stories work. That's because their stories are wrong. Okay? They're, they're not true. I'm not saying they're purposefully lying. I'm sure this dude just has no idea what he's talking about and he's just telling you what he genuinely believes. Right? Um, but if that was true and all these stars were like so far away which they're not, there's no way you could predict when one of them is going to explode or burst or flash or anything. There's just no way. Like, the odds of that are none. Like, that's not ever would happen. Start thinking. So this is a recurrent... Also, you'll notice, like, the name that they gave this, right? Borealis um, indicates towards the bar or towards the pole or the beam or the north and then corona which is this strange half circle tiara sort of shape right here um which the corona is you know a circle basically or it really means spikes really because the reason you get that corona word is because of this circle this object the doom shape right uh it it leaks out plasma and and plasma comes out of it so it, it has these spikes it looks like a crown of thorns or there's all kinds of different descriptions for it first of light and it lasts a week Hold or on, so just back to this. kind of getting familiar with the sky and where to look right now so that when it happens you can kind of notice the difference but uh, all right so if this does happen okay now I, I i believe that if these stars are much closer and that um our cosmology is an ancient cosmology, then yeah, it's much easier to to see what's going on and to predict things like this. But if you want to check it out um, when it happens, and they're predicting, they're like, oh, this is going to happen between now and September. Like in your model, like your academic ridiculous distances and all of that, my God, <laughs> like, um, there's no possible way that you could predict this ever. It would not happen. You would never be able to predict that this would happen, you know, reoccurring or whatever at all. Um, but if you want to see it when it does happen, uh, you look towards the east. So this is east right here, and it'll be just off the horizon. And you'll look for this little horseshoe star pattern right there, and it should be like right underneath it. We're looking at uh, Arcturus, which is the second brightest star in the sky. Uh, we have Corona Borealis, which is just to the south of that, and it's right here, just underneath it, is where we're looking for that change, that star that pops up. And again, it's not going to last very long, so get uh, familiar with it, and then when it happens, we'll let you know. You can go out and see the difference between. Them. It's 3,000 light years away they say. 
I'm telling you it's not. I'm telling you it's in our sky, under the firmament, right above your head. You know, not 3,000 light years away. It's ridiculous. The two, and you can see that star that only happens once every 80 years. Like, according to their academic model, this, if, if that's all true, then this would have already happened. Like, you're looking into the past uh, when you see all the stars. Like, all the stars are just glimpses of the past, and that light takes forever to catch up to Earth, and you know, that whole story. So that's what we're dealing with. That's what we're dealing with. <laughs> like, that's his way of saying, I, that's all I was told. I have nothing else to contribute to that. Anyways, uh, let's see what's next. Oh, yes. Yeah, so they hooked up uh, a, a brain chip to that first Neuralink patient, right? And of course, they're going to they're gonna put it in a handicapped person. And they're going to, because if you slam on it when it's in a handicapped person, then that means you're using hate speech. And that means that you hate handicapped people or something, you know what I mean? Which is ridiculous. So they always, they always try to find some heartwarming test subject to help out with some evil thing. And then what does he do with it? Plays Mario Kart all night long. Good job. Nicely done. That's the future. <laughs> you, get, you get to stay up all night and play video games with your mind interesting which actually could tie into this movie that we're about to break down too um so welcome to the future when uh you just play video games with your mind all night long with your Neuralink. uh this is interesting too the weather this is another weird strange weather uh segment or whatever it says geomagnetic storm pushes chance to the northern uh i'm sorry geomagnetic storm pushes chance to the northern lights into the southeast am i reading this correctly geomagnetic storm pushes chance to the northern lights into the southeast do robots write this i'm sad if people write this i'm like actually sad if people write this let me make that smaller geomagnetic storm pushes chance to the northern lights into the this is crazy uh it's clearly incorrect <laughs> uh, the reason this is an omen is because this is unnatural okay these northern lights are supposed to be up here there's supposed to be a small ring around the Arctic Circle, not a gigantic ring that sweeps all the way down to Las Vegas and Texas and Greenville, or at least visible from these places, right? This is a huge omen. This is the magnetic flux of the world. The world's going into flux. When the world goes into flux, danger will Robinson. It's bad news. I mean, it's good news for people like me because I, I'm like Gamork from the Neverending Story. Like, I want to help the apocalypse. I can't wait. Um, you know, I'm not basking in all of the. You know, I'm not looking forward to all of the bad things and death and stuff like that. I, I look forward to the cleanup. I look forward to the renewal and the bettering of the world. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, this is this was interesting. So another solar eclipse um, article, right? 2024 solar eclipse. This is like all the rage. Oh, it's the solar eclipse. Oh, solar eclipse. They're selling the like they they're they're selling you tickets as we talked about last time to go watch the solar eclipse. We've got great seats. <laughs> it's in the sky. <laughs> what are you talking about? Come watch it with us. Buy it. It's fifty bucks a pop. Come watch it. And people are all terrified. Oh, I don't know. I'm so scared. Like all these people are going to be together in one spot for a couple of hours. Like, do you hear people this scared of like the Super Bowl or anything? No. Uh, anyways, this article says the God's wrath, the ancient folklore of the eclipse. I'm just going to summarize. Eclipses are bad omens. Traditionally, they're never good. Okay, and usually they uh, they signify the death of a leader. So keep an eye out. So the death of a, a leader, usually a leader of a country or something. But this right here, this little article upset me. I want to read this part to you. Let me make this bigger. 
Hold on, let me fix this. I want everyone to be able to check this out right along with me as we read this. Because remember how I was talking about Ben Franklin and the kite and all that being garbage? And that's not true. None of it. And let me just remind everyone who's watching. Ben Franklin, the genius, alleged genius, goes out into a rainstorm, a thunderstorm, and an electrical storm with his son. Just takes his son out into an electrical storm. Flies a kite in the storm, ties metal to it and all this. None of that is true. Okay? I'm telling you right now, and I'm declaring that that's a lie. That that did not happen. Uh, maybe maybe somewhere, somebody, some idiot has flown a kite in an electrical storm. But if those are your heroes, your historic heroes that you look up to and your forefathers that you claim... I don't want to be a part of that family line, me personally. I don't want the, that genetics in me. I don't want to associate myself or support stupidity like that. That's not true. George, George Washington had wooden teeth. That's not true. There's a lot of fallacies that are taught in academic school systems that just irritate the crap out of me. This is one of them. In 1502, Italian explorer Christopher Columbus became stranded without supplies in the Bahamas. Let's just think about that off the top, right? One, my theory is that if there was a Christopher Columbus and he was commissioned by royalty from the other side of the world, it had nothing to do with, let's just, uh, you know, let's risk our armada the lives of our, our of our best explorers to go see if there's any other land over there or let's just risk their lives to see if there's a different way to India instead of the way we already know and we could easily just go you know I don't believe that story it doesn't sound logical to me or how about well um Let's risk all these people's lives and spend lots and lots of the, the money of the king and queen of Spain um, because we want more salt and pepper and cinnamon. Don't forget about cinnamon. This is what people are taught. This is what children are taught. Spices. <laughs> they make spices sound like it's freaking gold or diamonds or anything of value. I believe they were looking for the Fountain of Youth. Now, Italian explorer Christopher Columbus became stranded. How does that even happen? If you're commissioned by royalty and you have the, it's the support of royals of, your, of Spain, don't you think that they would like, you know, give you enough supplies to last your journey and whatnot? So, allegedly, Christopher Columbus became stranded without supplies in the Bahamas. His ship rendered unseaworthy by whole boring marine worms. That just doesn't sound right. I don't know. I don't have anything for that at all. It's just... All of it sounds terrible. This does not sound believable. His chance of rescue was remote. So he relied on help from the indigenous people. Now, this is interesting. They usually say this word like it means caveman. Just because people are indigenous, meaning that's where they're from. <laughs> like they're from that area does not mean that they were stupid. So he relied on help. Uh, this is also poor wording. He did not rely on help, according to the story I'm about to share with you. He intentionally deceived and lied to people in order to threaten their very existence by a made-up god that he created. Um, so do you see how it says, so he relied on help? I don't like how they, they reword history, man. It's all 1984 and the the Ministry of Truth. Anyways, his chance of rescue was remote, so he relied on help from the indigenous people. According to Jay Reynolds, a researcher astronomer at Cleveland State University, a research astronomer? Why does an astronomer's opinion on history matter? I don't know. 
Um, they eventually got fed up with the freeloading Europeans and they cut them off. Yeah, by freeloading, they mean rapists. Just so you know. Uh, murderers as well. Columbus had an almanac with him. Ooh. And he knew that there was going to be a total... Wow, these people actually write like that. He knew there was going to be a total lunar eclipse. So he said, If you don't provision us, my God will demonstrate his displeasure, and you'll see the moon turn blood red. This sounds like it would be from a movie for people that don't know any better. Okay? So here's a story. Columbus goes up to these cavemen. This is how it's being portrayed. He goes up to these monkey cavemen and he and he tells them that the moon that they're used to seeing is going to turn blood red one night if he doesn't get his provisions, which is an eclipse. Sure enough, a couple days later, there's the red moon up there. He never had to worry about food ever again. Tricked them. Magic. So, I went straight to chat GPT. Let me make this bigger. Let me share my little discussion on this story. I, I asked chat GPT, what indigenous people did Columbus meet? Let's get to specific, okay? And then it tells me, we go to all of this stuff. And then I say, is there a story? Is there really a story where he told them that his God would turn the moon red? if they didn't give him provisions and it's like yes totally i totally back up that story that that actually did happen blah 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 and uh you know he told the indigenous people and they're indigenous and they didn't they're retarded you know because they didn't know what a lunar eclipse was and i'm like so the people of jamaica didn't know about lunar eclipses that's what you're trying to tell me and it, and then J chat gpt starts like stuttering and kind of backpedaling and it's like oh well you know like you, you you have to consider like you know columbus was he came from spain and they were like they were more technologically advanced blah 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 and i'm like <clears throat> i'm like i disagree <laughs> i'm going to rephrase that part there is a vast history of quote unquote indigenous people all throughout ancient the ancient Americas in regard to how closely they watched the skies. They erected megaliths, which lined up precisely, based their timekeeping records off of the skies, and kept meticulous records of eclipses and other celestial phenomenon. Don't give me that propaganda lying garbage. So I straight up put Chad GPT in check. And it says, you're absolutely correct. I apologize for the misunderstanding. Indigenous people throughout the Americas, including those inhabiting Jamaica and surrounding regions, had sophisticated astronomical knowledge and observational skills. They developed complex calendars, observed celestial phenomena, and constructive constructed impressive structures that aligned with astronomical events. The indigenous peoples of the Americas had a deep understanding of the movements of celestial bodies, including the cycles of the moon and the occurrences of eclipses. They developed their own methods for tracking time, marking important events, and predicting celestial phenomenon. Given this rich astronomical tradition amongst the indigenous cultures, it's indeed unlikely that Columbus's prediction of the lunar eclipse would have been the first time that the indigenous people of Jamaica encountered such knowledge. Instead, Columbus's exploitation of their beliefs likely played into existing cultural understandings rather than introducing entirely new concepts. Blah, 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 blah. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. Blah, 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 blah. You see how quickly AI is programmed to defend the mainstream narrative, even when the mainstream narrative is completely wrong? Let's test this out. Hmm. 
I'm going to ask it something that I know is wrong right now. <laughs> Hold on. I just want to kind of test this out. What else do we know is wrong? Um, let's see. Let's do... Oh, the Nova thing. I forgot to tell you. I also had a chat with it about the Nova thing, too. Hold on. Let me... Where is uh, Nova? Yeah, yeah. Here it is. So, they, they were telling on the news, like, all oh, this Nova happens every 80 years. I'm like, okay. Let me ask ChatGPT here. What is this star, Corona Borealis, right? And it's it goes into it, and it's like, oh, it's a reoccurring Nova, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay. Does it Nova every 80 years, as I've been told? And it says, it's known for its reoccurrent Nova eruptions. But... Now, keep in mind, this version of ChatGPT has last been updated before this news story of like um, this Corona Borealis Nova that they're predicting and they're saying, you know, erupts every 80 years or whatever. Way out there in space with frozen ice volcanoes that fly around. Okay. Like, so this version of ChatGPT is not updated on this whole story of it being a recurring 80-year phenomenon. So it says, yeah, it's, it's known for recurring eruptions, but the interval between these eruptions is not precisely fixed. While it has experienced multiple outbursts in the past, the time between eruptions can vary significantly. Some recurrent, recurring novas, including this one, may have reoccurrent intervals ranging from decades to over a century. So the question is, how is it that they can so precisely and confidently tell you and I, look in this direction between now and September and you'll see a star explode? Right? All right, let me go ask this chat GP something. Um, what year did... Uh, let's see if it gets this one right. What year... Um, did Benjamin Franklin perform his famous kite e and key experiment? I want to see if it, if it backs up that just off the top. Benjamin Frank Franklin's famous kite and key experiment, which demonstrated the connection between lightning and electricity, is traditionally believed to have taken place in 1752. However, there is some debate amongst historians about the exact date and circumstances of the experiment. Sweet. So basically, yeah, it does back that up. That, that It's saying that that was an experiment and it did happen, but there's you know some debate about when it happened and stuff. And I could just get it. I could I could go twelve rounds with Chat GPT right now and just put it right back in check and tell it how wrong it is. Um, I'm gonna ask it about George Washington's teeth. Uh, let's see. What color were George Washington's wooden? No. How about not what color? What, how long, how long did George Washington ha have wooden teeth for, I will say. How long did George Washington have wooden teeth for? Ah, here we go. Contrary to popular myth, George Washington did not have wooden teeth. All right, well, good job, ChatGPT. You get a high five for that one. Anyways, you see my point, right? All right, let's move on. Scientists call for protection of moon sites that could advance astronomy. These moon sites, right? Hold on, let's just break this down. A moon site, what they mean by that is the land on the moon where people and robots have actually landed which has never happened. And uh, they want to protect those sites. So now they're trying to set up little national parks on the moon, basically. And that will also come with claiming land on the moon <laughs> and establishing borders and boundaries on the moon and stuff, which doesn't even exist. Um, moon sites that could advance astronomy, 
Right. Well, if I don't want astronomy needs to go back. It needs to go backwards. It needs to reverse and go back and reconsider a lot of things, okay? I really don't prefer astronomy the way it is today advance any further. It needs to stop. Now, it goes on to say, fears raised that prime lunar locations for universe unraveling instruments God, this is all terrible. Are in danger from imminent wave of human activity. Bases, experiments, mining, race to protect surface of the moon. So the way that they write these articles, which your average people will read and just believe, is that one, they start putting moon bases on your head, which means that they're putting the idea that the moon is solid in your head. Experiments, mining. Mining? Who is has ever mined the moon nobody okay not a robot not a human nobody you cannot mine light you just can't the moon is a luminary um yeah so they they put up words like this in the forefront mining just to make people think i just want to make sure everybody's still here well, I hope I'm not boring anybody. <laughs> I'm just kind of rambling and and stuff. Oh, we'll check out some of these AI videos in a second. But yeah, mining. So let's just, I'm going to glance over this article. Let's check this out. Astronomers are calling for the urgent protection of sites on the moon. Now, I am an astronomer and I'm not calling for this. So this is false. You see, because this is an absolute statement. All right, that's how easy it is to just tear apart any argument that's made from the position of an absolute. I'm an astronomer, and I'm not calling for any urgent protection of sites on the moon at all um, that, are, that are rated the best spots in the solar system for advanced instruments designed to unveil the secrets of the universe. Like what? Tell me one instrument that even could in theory, unveil the secrets of the universe. Tell me how that works. Tell me, tell me how you're going to go mine the mother freaking moon to get the secrets of the universe like it's the Sphinx or something. I hate all this. Like this, it's irritating. The prime locations are free from ground vibration. Yeah, because the moon has earthquakes. You know why the moon has earthquakes? Because it's earth. When they show you people walking around on it, <laughs> you can't walk around on a light, but you can walk around on the earth that has earthquakes. They call them moonquakes. And they also say that the moon is shrinking, by the way. Like everything I talk about when it comes to academics is so fairy tale to me. It's it's it makes me want to laugh and cry at the same time. Um, shielded from Earth's noisy broadcast signals. Oh, what a problem that must be. Two hundred thousand miles away, <laughs> or profoundly cold. Making them, I mean, I'm pretty sure the entire moon is profoundly cold, right? Or it should be, according to their, their models. Making them uniquely well-suited for sensitive equipment that could make observations impossible from elsewhere. But the pristine spots, the really choice moon landing spots known as sites of extraordinary scientific importance are in danger of being ruined by an imminent wave of missions such as lunar navigation and communication satellites, rovers, mining operations, and experts <laughs> warning on Monday that safeguarding the precious sites was an urgent matter. We're all, get, clear it out! Clear it out. Put some caution tape over here, people. What are you doing? <laughs> this is a this is a, a historic site. We need this spot. Okay, we're trying to we're trying to unveil the secrets of the universe here. I wish you people would take us seriously. Elon Musk, looking at you. <laughs> 
this is the first time humanity wow that's like that's like eight billion people has to decide how we will expand into the solar system i vote no okay i'm i include myself in this right here so whoever wrote this article and everyone that's reading this article i am a part of humanity and you do not get my vote to expand into the solar system first and foremost because it is not a solar system okay unless you're talking about exploring under the dome you're already doing that uh, but leaving the dome and going and polluting all the other alternate earths out there with your nastiness and toxicity no you don't get my vote and i will be expounding upon that when we break down this movie I like I like this uh, three body problem movie. It's so good. <laughs> I can't wait to watch the rest of it. This is the first time humanity has to decide how we will expand into this solar system. Yeah, well, you don't. You I don't. You have not proven yourselves to me. Okay, not nah, by a long shot. So I'm voting no. Says Elvis. An astronomer, blah, 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 at some place to impress you, blah, blah, blah. He studies big words and stuff. We're in danger of losing a one-of-a-kind uh, one kind opportunities to understand the universe. Bro, you can't even understand yourself. How can you possibly understand the universe? You don't understand the human body, the mind, the soul, chakras, the, the depths of the ocean. I'm dead serious. How can you be so pompous? At least 22 international missions are expected to touch down on the moon. Yeah, well, not by me. I don't expect that at all. I expect every one of those to fail. By the way, that's what they're doing. All of them are having track records of utterly failing. Look up anything that's landed on the moon lately, and it's tipped over, or it's broken, or it's out of service, or it's turned off permanently. I don't expect any of this that they're saying that they expect, whoever wrote this article. With half of them heading to sites near the lunar south pole. Yeah, where you can't see them. <laughs> On the back side of the moon. Right? Which is the other side of the dome, actually. Um, which is why you only see one side of the moon, okay? Because it's a part of the firmament which faces us. More will follow. Including commercial and civil landers. See, this is all just code for nasa and their doomsday preppers trying to get up to the firmament because they're doomsday preppers they're going to try to get out one day while two moon bases one u.s and the other chinese or chintz <laughs> the other one's chintz that's so funny man who does this like do they, do these people go to college for this i wonder do they spend a hundred thousand dollars to have no vocabulary or, you know, grammar skills at all. <laughs> Pardon me. The other Chinese and Russian are expected to be operational in the 2030s. Yeah, I don't expect that at all. Two moon bases. Yeah, right. You don't even have a moon base. You don't even have a human up there. Okay. There's nobody up there. <laughs> so this is all imagination without any coordinating authority there is nothing to prevent future clashes on the moon this is all made up this is all speculation this is all imagination none of this exists this is this is non-existent this whole article is just fictional the researchers say i'm a researcher i don't say that the risks range from physical collisions and dust clouds being kicked up by lunar activities to vibrations, electromagnetic interference, and damage to sites from drilling. Yeah, you're going to drill into light. And other operations. This is terrible. 
Uh, let's see what else. The prospect of performing astronomy from the moon was little more than a dream two decades ago. No, no, no. It still is. But researchers, whoever they are, now have firm plans for instruments. Firm plans. That makes it sound like it's real, right? <laughs> I've got some firm plans for the moon. Okay. Anyways, I'm not going to read all this. What does this say? 70 billion billion tonus? Why don't they just say tons? Is that how you spell that? Tonus? Tons? 70 billion billion tons of lunar rock. What is this talking about? The far side of the moon. I wasn't going to read this. But this incredibly ridiculous number got my attention. The far side of the moon is the most radio quiet place in the solar system. The far, the far side of the moon is the other side of the dome. The reason it's radio quiet up there is because there's a firmament in between. I'll talk about that pretty soon too. All right. Anyways, <laughs> search for alien life. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, like, I don't know. You might not be welcome. Anyways, all right. That's enough of that. Let's check out some of these new AI videos. Remember I showed you guys the Sora chat gpt basically has like it's coming up with the ability to make movies now dina hey what's up dina good to see you so check this out so these are some of the videos Welcome they have to beyond our reality a journey through parallel oh, worlds we here. where we delve into the extraordinary episode one unveils the giraffe flamingo a stunning hybrid that roams the savannah with grace and vibrant hues none of this is real In episode two we ascend with the flying pigs charming creatures that redefine the skies with their harmonious flight. Also, I just want to chime in on the flying pigs thing. Um, and if you don't know what this is, all of this is AI. So AI, you'll be able to just tell it what, what you want to see a video of, and it will just make that. And it will be very realistic looking. Um, but they say when pigs fly, and I believe there's actually truth to that, right? Just like they say once in a blue moon, Pigs and many other animals and people and objects and stuff will fly. They will they will float up into the sky and get sucked up into the atmosphere during um, atmospheric worldwide or worldwide atmospheric depressurization when the sky opens, which will happen. So this is what I believe this is always in reference to is something that 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 can happen, but it almost never does. But it does happen. You know what I mean? Like hell freezing over. Once in a blue moon, pigs flying and stuff. Episode 3 plunges us into the depths to discover the whale puss, an elegant blend of whale, the whale and octopus <laughs> ruling the ocean's place. Episode 4 introduces us to the eel cat, an aquatic enigma that combines the sleekness of an eel with the curiosity of a cat. Episode 5 presents the bunny armadillo, a delightful mix of bunny charm and armadillo protection, captivating our heart. Pretty cute-ish. Episode 6 features the horsefly, a small yet noble creature that buzzes with a blend of... Now, I also want to point this out. This is something that I have noticed because I, I, I mess with AI and stuff, you know? Like, I, I make art. I have a whole segment that I'm doing now. Masterpiece Mad Libs. I noticed people have lost... And this is why I do Masterpiece Mad Libs, is to sort of exercise our minds once more exercise our imaginations and our creative abilities because you when, when i see all these different wonderful examples of what ai can do it's the most simplest of taking one thing and merging it with another thing and it's always the same stuff people are always the the, the top they'll be like a top 10 list and and i guarantee you out of 100 people 90 of them are going to say the same thing you know what i mean make a make Tell AI to make a horse and a fly like it's a horse fly. Ha 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 ha. Make that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get it. But I'm saying that's really unoriginal. Okay. That's not a stretch of the imagination whatsoever. So it's no surprise to me to see these concepts. -like, like you have the world at your fingertips. You have the universe at your fingertips. You have anything you can actually come up with. You can create brand new things or tell this to create brand new things. But we don't. 
and fly like We just recreate the same things. Episode 7 explores the reptilian Aru, a creature that leaps across the desert with the vigor of a kangaroo and the resilience of a reptile. Our adventure culminates in Episode 8 with the Fox Crow, a fusion of fox cunning and crow freedom soaring through the forest. <laughs> Join us Excuse on this me. mesmerizing journey through beyond our reality. I mean, it's cool though. I think it's really cool. Like it's marvels of the unknown. Looks very realistic, right? Let me show you a couple more examples here. These are some newer ones. Um. Oh, here's here's a little video. All AI. The people are AI. Everything that you're seeing is not real. Look how convincing, convincingly it can make humans. Now see, there's like you might have you might have missed that. Let me show you some stuff. You have to really look close on some of these. Can I rewind this? How do you rewind? How do you go back? Ah, uh, I don't know if I can go back. Can you rewind this? Oh yeah. Maybe not. Oh, this is the beginning. Is that the beginning? Ah, oh, forget it. Anyways. Oh, I could just watch it again. So check this out. I want to show you something. Ah, oh, I don't want to watch it on this. Get out of there. All right. Anyways, my point is that there was a sign that said bicycle repair. But if you paid close attention, you'll notice that repair was spelled incorrectly, right? When in the real world, hopefully you wouldn't have... I mean, I'm not putting it past humanity at this point, but... You have to really look close to even see what's real in these videos anymore. Anyways, I'm not going to play this whole thing. So, it's a whole little mini movie that stars a balloon head guy. And all of it is fake. All of it is not real. The only thing that you, the only reason you can tell it's an AI video is because he has a balloon for a head. You know what I mean? But you can, you can tell it to make anything like this. And now it's starting to, like, this one is a whole movie about the whole golden record that they sent out into space, allegedly. As if a advanced alien civilizations, you know, would even know what a record was. <laughs> like, or, or like, you know, that's, I think that's hilarious. Um, yeah, like they're gonna they're, get out the record player. The humans have sent us a message. <laughs> Anyways, um, you know, there's more examples of AI and how how far it's gone and what it can do. It can do anything, and it's just it's interesting to me to to see. I sort of people watch when it comes to AI to see what people have it do, right? To see how creative we can be once again or if we have lost that ability to be creative this one's kind of cool check this out it's like a stained glass window clothing or something and and the person's not real or anything but it can generate real people look at look at the texture in this dude's face and cheeks and stuff now, I promise you this, there is somebody on earth that looks exactly like that. Um, man, I don't want to get too far off topic today, but I have this whole, this whole theory and video about our DNA being on a loop and everybody having doppelgangers and stuff like that, not just here in this world. And that's another sign of the end is whenever we start to procreate so much that um, the loop comes full circle and you start getting like you you start getting like clones of of people and stuff like that in their own ways anyways um and there's also alternate earths and stuff out there that's pretty much today's presentation uh thanks for bearing with me i was kind of rambling today and just enjoying myself and you know going with the flow so to speak let me say hello to everybody in the chat before we wrap things up wow there's a lot of people watching today 366 people ish uh, thank you. I'm honored. Um, I do have many more Omens episodes, right? Sometimes I have more energy. Today I, had, today I was lacking a little energy, but, you know, there's been days when I was sick lately and days when I was just mentally out of it because of, you know, the world's crazy, you know, to all of us sometimes. But I had a blast. I'm, I'm honored that so many people give me their time. And I'm going to wrap things up. Until next time, I'm Jay Dreamer saying good vibes and goodbye.
Let it go. It'd be easier for me. 